Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening. We're thankful, dear God, Lord, for salvation. We're thankful, dear God, Lord, for the experience of salvation. We're thankful for the testimonies, dear God. We're thankful, dear God, Lord, to be in a place where inspiration is there, dear God, Lord. Our faith is challenged and inspired, dear God. We're thankful, Heavenly Father. Help us, dear God, Lord, tonight, Lord, not to take it for granted, dear God. Lord, we ask you to bless the man of God in a special way. Lord, take him out of himself, dear God. Lord, you've been using the church of God. My God, Lord, souls have been getting saved, dear God. Lord, souls have been uh, being inspired, dear God. Lord, situations have been removed, dear God. Lord, and there's still situations there, dear God, Lord, we want you to take care of. Lord, so have your way in a special way, dear God. Lord, bless the message tonight. We love you. We appreciate you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, we do ask and pray. Amen. You may be seated and have you go to Romans chapter number eight. Romans chapter number eight. Skip down to verse number 35. Romans chapter number eight began a series discussing the burden of the New Testament church going out to do a work in the world and establishing a people that would come out of sin, paganism, and various different persuasions, and they would take a stand for truth give their lives to God, and the apostles had a responsibility. In every city that they went in to preach the gospel, the Bible said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Amen. So they had to go, and the responsibility of the gospel was to develop a people that will come out, church, ecclesia, come out, called out of sin, false religion, and these individuals would stand for the word of God, they would make up the body of Christ, the New Testament church, and they would not stand independently, each one doing what was right in their own eyes, but they would actually stand together on God's word, representing Christ, representing God collectively in the world. So they had the responsibility, despite the individual's background, despite their level of learnedness, to preach the gospel in such a way and teach the gospel in such a way. And the apostles, they gave no light uh, uh, focus on this. One scripture said that they went house to house teaching. And one another brother said, I cease not to warn you night and day what that you all would stand on the same gospel, on the same doctrine, on the same standards all over the world, proclaiming what it meant to be a Christian. One place it said that ye are living epistles, read and known of all men. People may never read a Bible, but they can look at you and they can see what the Bible is all about. So they had the responsibility of developing, amen, congregations of people together standing for God's word. And it was a beautiful thing because they would come from different backgrounds. One place Jesus was preaching and he preached to a, a lady, spoke to a lady, and she said the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. In other words, they were very prejudiced back then. But here Jesus would have a gospel that would go past racial barriers, that wouldn't have no prayer. Here you got people that don't get along, Jew, Gentile, Samaritan, and the Jews, this, that, and the other, but through the blood of Jesus, they would be able to come together as one. My Lord, you have many today, even throughout the United States and in the world, they're protesting for this and protesting for that. But it's a powerful thing. The solution to everything is the pure, unadulterated word of God. Amen. Bible salvation. Amen. Some of that stuff go deep in the heart. But thank God the blood goes deeper. Amen. You can come from the blood. Amen. And you come and get saved for real. You might, amen, have been a part, amen, of this uh, group or that group and you didn't get along with these people or that people but thank God through the blood you see everybody amen as your sister as your brother amen the way you used to think is all behind you that's because the gospel of Jesus Christ has that level of power amen, amen. so here they had that responsibility to preach a gospel that the congregation will be standing four square on the word of God and many not understanding this have ended up producing mixed multitudes. 
You know what a mixed multitude is? A mixed multitude is there's people all coming together, but they all believe something different. They all stand for something different. They all standing on this, so-and-so standing on that, so-and-so standing on that. But the intention was to develop a people that stood together, not adding to the word, not preaching your own personal opinion, but God's word. But not just that, but to also have an experience that's so deep that individuals would be able to stand alone. It don't matter what persecution comes. It don't matter who came and who went. It didn't matter if half the disciples decided we're going to walk no more with Jesus. But there would be a few. There would be a remnant that no matter what they go through, no matter who comes, who goes, who apostatizes, that they would have the mindset, as for me and my house, we're going to stand for the Lord. Sister, I love you. Brother, I love you. But if you backslide, don't look for me to follow you. I appreciate how you prayed for me. You might have been saved longer than I've been saved, but I'm standing for this gospel. I'm staying saved with money, no money, children, no children, married, not married, single, widowed. It don't matter. I have an experience with God that I'm not going nowhere. Amen. My father could pass away. Pastor, pass away. This could happen. That could happen. But y'all can have and we can have an experience in our souls that no matter what comes, what goes. Amen. Storms may come. Winds may blow. But thank God we can hold fast to God's unchanging hand so here we began to talk about and preach on and teach on how do we obtain that experience that's so personal that is not predicated upon my husband my wife my children my brother my sister but this thing is personal so we began to preach on that and there was three things that we wanted to cover with this the first was faith and we preached on that already how you must have faith in God personal faith that God will bring you through because you're going to go through some things. And if you're going to stand alone, you must have faith. That no matter what I go through, God will bring me through. No matter how, long, how high the storm clouds may go or the waves may go, that I'm holding steady. Because if you don't have faith enough, the devil can attack your faith. And your faith cannot be in your preacher. Your faith cannot be through brother so-and-so. But there's going to be some midnights that you're going to stand alone. There's nobody going to be around. And my God and God's going to see and the devil's going to see what she's going to do. What she's going to do. And you got to have faith. All these services you come to, that's why we don't get off into any type of entertainment. The songs, we're not trying to sing eight verses over and over again to get you up. No, it's too, the battle is too serious to be entertained at church. No, no, no. Everything we do must be edified. That's what the Bible said. Everything must be done to the edification. Every song, every test. Don't just get up and testify if God ain't let you to. No, my God, don't just get up saying so. It's too late in the day for that. Ain't God, we, we, we don't need no testimony. If God didn't lead you to testify, it's going to build us up. It's going to encourage us. Hold your peace. We good. So here, you got to have personal faith. And we already preached on that. And the second thing that we're dealing with is you must have a personal persuasion. The Apostle Paul articulated here. Go ahead and read for us, brother. And tonight, we talked about what a persuasion was, but tonight we're going to preach on how do you obtain a persuasion? How do you actually obtain a persuasion? Go ahead and read. Who shall separate us? Who shall separate us? From the love of Christ. From the love of Christ. Shall tribulation. Shall tribulation. Or distress. Or distress. Or Distressful situations. Come on and read. Or persecution. And we talked about how these actually break down various components. Tribulations are things that can come from without. Various things that you can face. Then it talked about distress, stress, anxiety. Nothing internally going to turn me from God. I don't care how stressful my life gets. Going back is not an option. I'm not going to let the devil stress me out of my salvation. Amen. It don't matter, children. You're not going to stress me out of my salvation. Amen. Not having enough money is not going to stress me out of my salvation. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to allow nothing to press me, stress me, anxiety me, or anything else, my God. Come on and read. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Yes. Shall tribulation uh -huh. or distress yes. or persecution yes. or famine uh -huh. or nakedness uh -huh. or peril My Lord. or sword yes. as it is written. Come on. For thy sake we are killed all the day long. My Lord, we go through situations that can kill us all the time. Read. 
We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Come on, should have been dead a long time ago. People have been counting us out. Come on and read. Nay, in all these things, my God, we are more than We didn't conquerors. go back. We didn't back up. And all of these things that the devil sent my way to destroy me, to stress me out, to cause me to give up, to cause me to go crazy. Of all these things that he sent my way, things without, things within, thank God I have the testimony. The Apostle Paul said, I have the testimony after all I've been through. I am more than a conqueror, amen. Amen. I didn't just make it through, amen. I made it through saved. I made it through encouraged. I made it through my faith intact. I made it through, amen, with a determination down in my soul. Thank God, saints, when you make it through, but you make it through and you're still saved, you still got your testimony, you still in courage you still not going you are more than a conqueror come on and read and all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us come on for i am persuaded for i am persuaded that neither death yes nor life uh-huh nor angels come on nor principalities yes nor powers yes nor things present come on nor things to come come on anything that i might deal with read nor height come on nor no, death come on no nor situation any, can try to take me too high come on or too low Come on and read. Nor any other creature. Or any other created situation or being. Read. Shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. What a testimony. What a strong testimony. So here the Apostle Paul, he dealt with pretty much everything you could deal with in life. And he said, I'm not going nowhere. And it was found in verse number 38. He said, for I am persuaded. You must obtain a personal persuasion if you're going to survive the storms. If you're going to survive, amen, the mountaintops as well as the valleys. If you're going to survive, amen, from the beginning of your salvation till you draw your last breath and the angels come and take you home. Not everyone that gets saved goes far enough or deep enough or it takes the time to sincerely obtain a personal persuasion down in their souls. Yes, they're saved. They repented. They say, receive their testimony. But not everybody goes far enough. So we're going to break down. There's five things that must be done in the time that we have remaining. To obtain a personal persuasion that you can be convinced, that you can have the witness down in your own soul. I'm not going nowhere. God is not a respected person. Mm -hmm. How could the Apostle Paul be able to declare this? And you may say, well, but Lee, uh, some stuff, I don't know what could bring in the future. He didn't either. Mm -hmm. He said it. He said no, things present, nor things to come. How could he say that? He didn't know what if Nero came with it. It didn't matter. He had a persuasion. Well, what, what, what if, what if the, the congregation stopped supporting him? They did. He had a persuasion. What if they don't shout when I, when I sing my song or they don't let me testify no more? They don't let me uh, lead the service. They don't let me. It, it don't matter. It, 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 I, I took the time to, de to develop a persuasion down in my soul. Amen. And I'm not going nowhere. You don't have to worry about, am I going to stay saved? You don't have to worry about, uh, uh, I wonder where they are. I wonder if they still got five. Don't worry about that. Why? Because I wasn't just saved. I didn't just come to the church. I didn't just say it was a good service. Oh, you hear that testimony? No, no, no. When I got saved, thank God on Damascus Road, thank God I took the time Amen. To get before God and to obtain a persuasion not given from man, not given from the high priest, not given from Brother James, not given from Peter. But I got a persuasion. My God, straight from God, your persuasion must come from above, not from the earth, not from people. It's got to come from above. I took the time to get before God to obtain this persuasion. Now I know I can stand alone. And I'm not going nowhere. So how does a person obtain this persuasion? A persuasion is strongly convinced to possess a firmly settled position, a persuasion. We must not relax when a person gets saved. But as a congregation, as a ministry, we must labor before God, instructing them and not resting until they obtain a persuasion. When 
Amen. And if they don't go far enough to obtain a persuasion, you may be encouraged by them. But one eye, you'll be looking. Are they coming still? One eye, you'll be looking. I hope they still encourage. One eye, if you don't, by God, pray them through your child, get saved, shout, praise God. But if you don't take the time to pray and instruct them on obtaining a real persuasion down in their soul, there's something in you that you just, it just won't be a settling there. It's something in you that you just want. I wonder if they're going to make it through this. I wonder if they're going to make it through that. But thank God if they obtain a persuasion, you don't have to worry about that no more. You may have to pray for them to God, give them the strength, this, that, and the other. But as far as going back, you ain't got to worry about that. My Lord, you know, that's a settled thing in their experience. So how do we obtain it? Number one, you must be convinced that what you have and what you are standing for is from God. Let me say that again. You must be convinced. They say, oh, these people, they dress nice. No, 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 no. That ain't going to be, that's not enough. Oh, I enjoy the singing. Oh, I found a new church and I enjoy the singing. That's not enough. Oh, I like the preacher. He's not. That's not enough. Oh, sister so-and-so, she prays with me on Friday night. That's not enough. You got to go far enough with God to be convinced that what I have and what I'm standing for is directly from heaven. It's yeah. of God himself. It's not somebody who can preach good or sing good or they love, or they love at that church. That's not going to be enough for you to obtain a persuasion. You must go far enough to be convinced of this truth. You must be willing to stand on this truth when nobody can talk you out of yeah. it. Nobody can say anything to you to convince you otherwise. You must go far enough so how is this done go over to Acts chapter 26 verse number one the individual must go far enough you must be convinced that what I have the experience that I have and what I'm standing for now is directly from God this didn't come from man Acts 26 1 through 3 then Agrippa said unto Paul, uh -huh. Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Uh -huh. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. Uh -huh. I think myself happy, King Agrippa. My Lord, here he is on trial for his life. They say, you can share your testimony. He said, huh? Hold on. His brother on, on trial, on death row, on trial for life. And they said, Paul, come on forth. You can share your testimony. <laughs> Praise God. You going to listen? Yes. All the center, all the court, all the leaders. Stop what y'all doing. Everybody stop. Apostle Paul, come on out. You, you got the audience. I'm happy. My Lord. I think I can get my testimony. I think myself, you know, you're about to get your head cut off. Right? I can testify to all y'all. And y'all going to sit there. And y'all ain't going nowhere. Y'all ain't going to walk out on me. I can tell you what, what, what you ain't, you ain't going to, I can just say what I feel to say. This brother said, I know I'm on death row. I'm in court for whatever for my life. He said, but I can go up here and declare the church of God messed. Praise, praise God. Senate, Mitch McConnell, step, stop. Nancy Pelosi, tell him to stop. Uh, uh, uh. Justice Roberts, get y'all 12 over here. Come in and sit. Stop. Uh, uh, Secretary of Defense, you come on over here. Secretary of Trent, you come and sit down. Everybody come on and sit down. President Trump, have a seat. Church of God, come on up here. Serious? What? what did this brother say? Come on and read, brother. I think myself happy. Yes. King Agrippa. Yes. Because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Jews. Uh-huh. Especially because I know thee to be an expert in all customs and, and, and questions which are among the Jews. Uh-huh. Wherefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life. Come on, read, my brother. youth, which was at the first among my own nation at Jerusalem, Know all the Jews, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect 
of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving God day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? Come on, brother. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary Come to on. the name of Jesus of Nazareth. You think raising the dead was something? Let me tell you about me. Read. Which thing I also did in Jerusalem. Come on and read. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison. I tried to stop this too. Mm. I tried to, come, to shut this light out too. I tried my best to do it. But come on and read. Which thing I also did in Jerusalem. Yes. And many of the saints did I shut up in prison. Man, I put these folk in prison. I, I didn't believe at all. I was a persecutor. I called them Amptonites. Mm. Dogged them out. Talked about them. Them dudes dress wearing self. Crazy folk, they in the cult, they, they following Jim Jones. I, I was the main one. But my God, oh, when you come in contact with truth, my Lord, that which you used to talk about, that which you used to dog out, my Lord, you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Amen. Come on and read. What did he say, brother? Having received authority from the chief priests. Yes. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. Come on. And I punished them oft in every synagogue. Come on. And compelled them to blaspheme. Come on. And being exceedingly mad against them. If anybody didn't believe in this way, it was me. Mm. Come on and read. I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Strange cities. cities. I wasn't even supposed to go down to those cities. Read. Whereupon as I went to Damascus. I went to Damascus. I was on my way. With authority and commission from the chief priest. Listen, you don't understand. It wasn't like. I was still after them. I was going to Damascus, not to the revival. I was going there to look for some more Church of God people to destroy them. Come on and read. At midday, O king. Hey, yes, sir. I saw in the way a light from heaven. My Lord. Above the brightness of the sun. How in the world do you see a bright light at midday when the sun is bright? That light had to be real bright. Mm. Oh, glory be to God. God will make this truth <laughs> brighter Lord. than any light. Amen. Any natural source of light. Amen. When you come in contact with real Bible salvation, amen. thank God. Amen. That change will be stronger. Amen. When God deals with your heart, when God convicts you of sin, when God deals with you, that thing will be brighter. That thing will be clearer. Amen. Than the noonday sun. Come on and read, brother. At midday, O king. I saw in the way a light from heaven. Yes. Above the brightness of the sun. Uh-huh. Shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. Yes. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me. Yes. Saying in the Hebrew tongue. My Lord. Saw, saw. Uh-huh. Why persecutest thou me? Yes. It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. I heard it clearly. You can't tell me nobody was talking. I heard it clearly. I can tell you. No, you just heard some. No, 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 no. I can tell you what language it was in. I can tell you what time. Well, it was about the 15th of uh, one day. No, 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 no. I can tell you, they ain't had clocks back then. So we said, I'm going to take you close as I can. I know we ain't got clocks and all this other stuff, wristwatches and all that other stuff, but I'm going to tell you about the sun. It was noonday. That's what it was. It was noonday. I'm uh, Exactly what time it was, as if I had a Rolex on. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it was noonday. Amen. It was noonday. That, that's when it was. Okay, I heard a voice. I heard something. No, 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 no. Oh, I heard a voice, and I'm going to tell you what language it was in. It was in the Hebrew language. And I'm going to tell you exactly what it said. Come on and read, brother. Saw, saw. Yes. Why persecutest thou me? Yes. It is hard for thee to kick against that the That thing pricks. knew my name. Mm. God knows your name. Amen. He knows where you're at. Oh. He knows what you're dealing with. He knows where you're at in life. Amen. He will deal with you directly. Oh, it wasn't unique. It wasn't like person, person. Amen. When you got saved, when I got saved, amen, God dealt with me directly. Right, right. He knew where I was at, knew what I was dealing with, knew how to bring conviction my way, was able to speak to my heart. How did God know where I was at? How did the preacher, God, how did the preacher know what I was dealing with, where I was at? It wasn't the preacher, my God. It was God. And I can't deny it. I can't say it didn't happen. He said, so Saw, saw. He dealt with me directly, knew exactly where I was at in life. Undeniable. Undeniable. I can't deny it. Come on and read, brother. It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. Come on and read. And I said, who art thou? Yes. Lord. And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. He, he made it clear. Mm. He said, I'm Jesus. 
I'm Jesus. This is not Buddha. This is not uh, uh, Jupiter. This is not Diana. This is not. I'm letting you know this is Jesus. Amen. This is Jesus, my God. This brother had an experience that was undeniable. You want a persuasion? You ain't. No, 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 no. You ain't got. No, listen, I know what I was. I know how God dealt with me. I, no, no man could have done that. No man knew where I was at, knew how, what I needed and how I needed it. No man knew that the deliverance that I was need, what I needed to be delivered from. It wasn't no eight-step program, 12-step program. It was noonday, and from that moment, I was different. I was changed. I was a brand new man. I was the worst of sinners. But God changed my heart, my mind. So here, he had an undeniable experience with God. He was firmly, when he was on trial... For his life, all he had to do was deny and just say, hey, I'm reconsidering everything. And he would have went right back to an esteemed member of the Sanhedrin, of the Pharisees, and all these other places that he was at. But he had an experience that he couldn't deny. He said, if it cost me my life, it cost me my life. But I cannot deny. And it's clear what I had. In order for a person to obtain a persuasion, they must be clear. And what they have, they must be clear in truth. A person can grow up and they were taught to go to a little booth. Say these words. Tell the man all the things that they've done. Then when they get done, he gives them a prescription. He says, go count these beads. Say, I help Mary. Look, I, say five of them, so on and so forth. You do this, light an incense and go. That's what I know. Well, a neighbor down the street. Yeah, I grew up, went to church. You go in, they sing Amazing Grace. They sing a little, another song. Then the preacher say a little, nah, they treat a little messy. Nah. They take offering. Take offering again. Take offering again. <laughs> and then, hey man, they're going to say the doors of the church uh, is open. Uh, uh, and then you walk down. And you stand in front, no altar work, nobody telling you about sin, nobody teaching you how you're going to be broken and contrite with godly sorrow. You got to let God know you're sorry for all your sins. You got to let God know, that for you, Lord, forgive me. Lord, I'm done. Lord, I'll live for you for the rest of my life. Nobody really talk with you and work with you. If you had spirits, no spirits was cast out. No, none of that. I didn't know. And guess what? I joined the church that day. But guess what? The next day. I was doing the same thing I've always been doing. They just taught me every night, you just get on your knees, and you go in there, and you just say, when you read the Bible, and then you look at your experience, and the Bible says, out of the same mouth come blessing and cursing, these things ought not be. And you're still cursing people out. You still got buttons people can push, and you go there. You're still involved in stuff, so you just say at nighttime, Lord, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, the next day, same thing. Okay. So I, I come to truth. How can I get a persuasion, though? How do I know this is not just a better version of what I was involved in, just a little cleaned up? How do I know that this is just not some people that just really know Scripture better than the people that knew Scripture that where I was at, but they did really not true? How do I know that this is of God and this is just not somebody just convinced? How do I know? I've been church hopping. I've been church hurt. I've been over here. I've been there. I tried this. I tried some of this. I tried this. I tried this. I mixed this with this. I, I, I did this. I spoke in tongue. I believed this. I, I, I jumped up and down. I gave a lot of money. I had some stuff in the law that I was doing. I mixed the law with the New Testament, combined that, and then I did that. I felt better. Then I took a little bit of the Islam faith, and I put that inside Christianity, and then I added some yoga with it, so I was meditating. How do I know where I'm at now is really of truth? Let me show you how you can tell where you're at if it's of truth or not. Turn your Bibles, amen, over to John 17, 17, because if you don't get this persuasion, you may come for a few weeks, but pretty soon... You'll go on to the next wind of doctrine. So how do you get this persuasion? John 17, 17. First thing, write that down. You must be honest. If you want to know, how do I know this is truth? How can I be convinced? Number one, you must be honest. Come on and read. Sanctify them. Yes. Through thy truth. Yes. Thy word is truth. Okay. Go over to... Um, 
that's not the one I want to go over to. Give me a minute. The devil didn't want this truth to get out. Oh, Lord. Have mercy, Heavenly Father. We're going to get it. Have mercy. John. If any man will know the truth, whether it be of me or of God, let me see if any man will know. Maybe. Try it. John yeah. seven seventeen. John seven. Uh, we start at 16. Okay, there you go. I'm sorry. I added a 7. And I, You're right. I, 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 come on and read. John 7, 17. Read. We start at 16. Jesus answered them yes. and said, my doctrine is not mine. So here, they were trying to figure out was Jesus truth or not. He said, first of all, my doctrine is not mine. Amen. Whenever it's truth, where it's leading you is to God. Is to a right relationship with God. Amen. It's not leading you to join somebody's church. It's not leading you to be a part of this. When, it, when it's truth, it's leading you to God. Amen. It's leading you to a, a pure relationship with God. That's right. It's all about God. It's not about you come to the church of God. They don't even talk about what about that? What about no, no. You and God. David said, "How can I do this great sin against God?" That's good. Well, you know what? I just don't think there's nothing wrong with lying or smoking weed. The body is the temple of God. It ain't about me. It's about you and God. Well, I, got, well, I, I know that I'm uh, with, my, with my girlfriend and we still sleeping around. Whatever. Listen, it ain't about God. It's God's word. The, by, the word of God speaks against that. This is, this, is God, this is God. He said, if any man should know it, come on and read, brother. My doctrine is not mine, uh -huh. but his that sent me. Come on. If any man will do his will, yes. he shall know of the doctrine. Stop right there. If any man will do his will. First, you got to be honest. I want to please God. I want to please God. If, if you want to know, is this of God? I want to please God, not man. Lord, I want to be right. Lord, down in my soul. See, he said, listen, this is it. You want to know what's true this? He said, if any man will, good, if you got the desire, man. You, you, I, you, you can't desire to get out of trouble. You can't desire to be a part. I want to know truth. In my heart and in my soul, I want to know truth. If somebody got a strong desire, strong, Jesus said, I'll show it to you. That's right. If you're honest, That's right. I ain't going to confuse you. I'm not going to make it this, that, or the other. It's simple. Right. We can't make it calculus because heaven and hell is predicated upon you understanding truth. So he said, first of all, mm -hmm. if any man, what, Brother Trail? If any man will do his will, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine. If you will do his will to live right, mm -hmm. to please him, he said, I'll make it clear to you. Mm -hmm. I'll witness. I don't get ahead of myself. So, number one, the individual got to have a personal desire and honesty. I want to know what's right. That's right I really do. Yeah. I want to please God. God, don't let me be confused. God exposes if it's wrong or confirm it if it's truth. And if a person is honest. If they're honest, God will lead them. If they're honest, you ain't got to go break down this, that, and the other. If they're honest, right. if they're real honest in their heart, I want to be right with God. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Just keep coming. I want to be right with That's it. Don't worry about it. Well, I don't know this, that. Don't worry about it. You honest. Yes. I want to please God. I don't want to do nothing wrong. I don't want to do nothing that God would have me to do. I don't want to do nothing. I don't want nothing in my life to not be backed up by God's word. I don't want nothing in my life to be wrong. I want to please God. It don't matter. I may not know how to dress. I may not know what to eat. I may not know any of this stuff, but I want to please God. I don't want to follow man. I don't want to be confused. I want to please God. If any man got that desire, deep down in their heart, they real honest. God would make it clear. All right. Go to, go to, now, 
Go to John 3, 319 real quick. John 319. The reason why honesty is important. When you want to have a persuasion, you must be convinced that what you're a part of is truth. And in order to get that convincing, you got to be honest. You got to be honest. But I'm going to show you why honesty is important. Read verse 19. And this is the condemnation. Yes. That light is come into the world. Truth came. Light came. Come on and read. And men Well, no, love. no, no. But Lee, uh, they, they didn't take their stand. They said, it wasn't clear. No, it wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't nothing about God not making it clear. That's right, brother. You at your job, you trying to convince your cousin to come to truth or somebody on your job, this, that, and the other? Mm -hmm. If they're honest, mm -hmm. saints, truth makes sense. That's right, brother. If a person's honest, they've never been satisfied in Babylon. Mm -hmm. It just didn't, it did, they were there, but it was something that just didn't, the dots didn't connect. The experience just wasn't, it's just something missing. They were the best they could be. That's a Paul. He was a Hebrew, the Hebrew, Pharisee, the Pharisee. He dotted every I and crossed every T. But if something was missing. Right. So here he said, this is a condemnation. The light came. Understanding of truth came. But what happened? And men love darkness. Come on. Rather than light. They were not honest. They were not honest. They were not honest. They were not somewhere. Somewhere it came. Well, you know what? Uh, what? What well, they was preaching against uh, in the Bible, I was reading somewhere Jesus spoke against that I couldn't do, and I just or well, they were mm -hmm. light came, it's good, brother. truth came, but some somewhere was gonna cramp your style. Mm -hmm. Something somewhere was gonna cause you to have to get rid of some stuff. Mm -hmm. Some somewhere was gonna cause you to be a little bit uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Something it was a cross you wasn't willing to pick up. Something somewhere. So here you gotta be honest, and if a person's not. Then a delusion will come. Confusion will come. Something to come up to confuse them or get them to go. What? Many times, it wasn't truth. It wasn't that God didn't make truth clear. Someone honest. Someone honest. So come on and read. So this, no, 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 no. We got to go to the next point. Go to uh, Second Chronicles 15.5. The second thing is you must seek it with your whole heart. So in order to, be, to understand truth and to be convinced of it, one, you got to be honest. And number two, you, you got to seek with your whole heart. Come on and read. Second Chronicles 15, 15. And all Judah uh -huh. rejoiced at the oath. Uh -huh. For they had sworn with all their heart. Yes. And sought him with their whole desire. Come on and read. And he was found of them. Uh -huh. And the Lord gave them rest right there. round about. God ain't a respected person. Mm. You be honest and you seek it with your whole heart. Don't play games with this. Don't just do something when you come to church. But you, over in Acts, uh, don't go there, but over in Acts 17, it said these were more noble mm. because they searched the scriptures daily, whether they be so. Everything you hear off the pulpit, get your word out. Part right note style. Go home and say, Lord, hold on. I want to know. I don't understand free from sin. I ain't never heard this before. But show me in the word. Help me understand this, Lord. Lord, first of all, I want, I'm honest. I want to be right. I do want to live right. But I've never heard anybody say that a Christian can live a life consistently victorious over all sin. Lord, help me understand it. I'm honest. I want to be right. And two, you can't just haphazardly just, OK, I go to church. I take my Bible. I read my Bible when I get to church. This is, no, 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 no. I want to know if this is truth or not. I want to get this persuasion. So guess what? I hear him say it, and I'm, oh, is, is it in the book? No, I'm not just going to sit back and listen to you preach. Make it sound how you want to stay in the book. Stay in the book. Okay, sh show me, show me, and line up on line. Don't just pull one scripture and say this right here, but line up on line, precept on precept, line it up and put it together. And if you're honest, God will. God uh, will give you the understanding. God will give you the wherewithal. If you start searching and you seeking, saying, I'm honest, I want to be right. Whatever the truth is, whatever the doctrine is, if you're honest, God will show you through his word Amen. when you seek with the whole heart. So a person wants to be convinced. They must be honest and they must seek with the whole heart. Isaiah 30, 21, what will God say? Isaiah 30, verse 21. So if a person wants this persuasion that they can't be talked out of, 
they got to be convinced that what I'm in <laughs> is not just another church. What I ran into is not just some other group of people. But my God, the Apostle Paul said, this is just not another sect. They had a bunch of sects. Let me take you a step further. They had a bunch of people that were claiming to be the son of God. Yeah. Study Josephus or some of the uh, 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 apostolic fathers, this and the other. Matter of fact, forget that. I think it was C maybe Julius Caesar or Alexander the Great. One of them, it was rumored that his mother had had an affair with a god and he was created. So that even concept was not for, it's foreign to us today. We think it's just the Jesus story. You study history far enough back, there were other people that were saying that they, they, were, they were the product of, what's that? Yeah, they were the product of a relationship with, with their mother had a relationship with God. But my God, they didn't go up on no cross. And three days later, they didn't get up off that ground. Oh, Lord. Amen. Seen my God of a few women. Then seen of the 12. Then seen above 500. My Lord, you couldn't deny it. They put guards there to say uh, uh, it was rumored that he was supposed to get up. So y'all make sure he don't get up. Oh, my, my, my. But one day, that stone started rolling away. Amen. They looked on the inside and they said, where is he at? Oh, there he is. He's just kind of asleep. No, that's his clothes. That's not him. Oh, he left those grave clothes. Amen. Thank the Lord. So here the apostle Paul made it clear. I'm persuaded because I'm honest. First of all, I got the experience. Now I'm gonna get that in a moment, but I was honest. And I sought it with everything within me. What would God say? Read brother. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee. Yes. Saying. Yes. This is the way. Walk ye in it. If you honest and you seek with your whole heart, God himself will make it clear to you. This is a way. This is a way. It'll just be a peace over you. It'll be a calmness. It'll just be a confidence. Not in man. But this is what I've been. This. This. I'm clear. Matter of fact, when Jesus was dealing with his own disciples, he said, whom do men say that I am? They said, one of them, they said, one said to you, one said that you are the Elias, one said you're Jeremiah, one of the prophets. Jesus said, whoa, stop, stop. Because this won't work if y'all don't have the persuasion. You got to put your life, your family on the line for this. You got to be willing to go no matter how far you got to go for this gospel. And it won't work. I don't care how many messages you see me preach. They've been to the Sermon on the Mount. They've seen him do all this other stuff. But Jesus said, stop. It ain't enough for you just to sit up under this message. It's not enough for you just to see some healing just said the other. You got to have something that comes straight. Not from me. He said, who do y'all say that? Y'all say that. Peter said, listen. Thou art the Christ. The one Isaiah, Daniel, 70 weeks, bring in, you are him. You're not a prophet. You're not just some word. You are him. Jesus said, flesh and blood. That's good, brother. You good. Flesh and blood did not reveal it. You got to go far enough with God for this gospel right. that you get before God right, and you say, my God, this is the truth. This yes. is it. The word of God finally makes sense. This is it. Mama, this is it. This is it, my God. Amen. And every once in a while, you get around a seasoned saint. My God, when you get that revelation to you, and you might have been in services for a month. You might be in services for six months. You might have been in service for two months. I don't know. But my God, when you get around a seasoned saint and you go and you declare, whoa. Whoa, it's only one church. What'd you just say? <laughs> Hold on. Amen. You don't join no church. What'd you just say? Amen. Nowhere in the Bible is a joint church. You got to get saved. Whoa, what, what'd you just say? When you get saved, you live for Flesh and blood. You set up on a lot of gospel messages. But what you just said and the way you said it and the conviction that you said it, mm -hmm. that didn't come from man. Mm -hmm. That didn't come from just sitting somewhere. If you don't get a persuasion, of this gospel, if you're going to get a persuasion down in your soul that no matter what I go through, no matter who come against me, no matter what I face in life, I'm not going nowhere. The first thing you're going to have 
is a 100% convinced of the truth. Mm -hmm. This is the gospel. That's right, I'm bro. honest. I'm honest. I wanted to know what's right. I sought it with everything within me. I listened. Every time the word opened, I listened. The testimonies, I seen if they lined up with the gospel. I, 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 I wrote, I studied, I got books and I got dictionaries. I got, and God himself mm -hmm. witnessed to me. The Bible said his spirit shall bear witness with our spirit. That's right, brother. Amen. When well, angels is not here, well, I don't see people walking down the street, Francis Street and, 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 and I-94. I don't see no. Listen, God don't need no physical angel to come here to convince you. God himself can speak directly to you. That's right, brother. This is it. And it will be as strong a convincing as if Gabriel himself flew in this room. That's what's necessary Amen. to get that convincing. And saints, we can't stop short. What God is doing all over the land calls nonstop. Tomorrow we've got another meeting. All another part of the U.S. They're tuning in. They're saying, hold on. Hold on. Can y'all come here? What about this? Can we talk? Can we go? They're saying, whoa, people can come get saved, but we cannot relax until they go far enough to get a persuasion. And when they get a persuasion, a saint will get a witness. You ain't got to keep them courage. No, no, no. They ain't just saying they saved. They something different now. They ain't just, you ain't, you ain't got to keep wondering, you know, you wonder, do they see it? Do they not? No, no, no. They went far enough. They searched it. They was honest and God revealed it. That's the first step. Shall we say? Y'all took my time. <laughs> my Lord, my Lord, my Lord.